So this is what we're dealing with. Bags, bags, bags. Hello everyone, my name is Tor and welcome or welcome back to Anthropology. Thank you for joining me in today's video. If this is your first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. On this channel, I talk all about things fashion related, mindful consumption, intentional buying, and handbags. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Let all these new people know that they should subscribe, like this video, and comment anything down below. Okay. <clears throat> In today's video, we have an exciting one. It is my updated 2022 handbag collection video. So I've done a few of these in the past. I will link them down below if you wanna see how my collection has evolved and changed over the years. But today we will be going through my updated uh, handbag collection as of September, 2022. I have 14 bags in total. I don't know why I did the five, but I have 14 bags in total. Not all of them are designer, but so I will be breaking this video down into a few parts. It'll be by brand. The timestamps will be in below, so I'm not sure exactly how it will be structured. I'm just going to go with the flow when we get started, but everything will be down below so you can mix and move about. Designer bags will be first and non-designer bags will be at the end. And then I just want to get into a little bit around how big should your collection be? Is it too big if it's over 10? Is it not enough? Like, what does it mean to have a collection and the size of that collection and how many bags is too many bags so if you're interested keep watching all right so i'll start off with celine because that is the house that i have the most bags from so first off we have my celine nano luggage tote in the color pollen this bag is no no stranger to this channel this bag has been on this channel so many times it's basically the mascot as i've said before it's in this beautiful yellow color i picked this up last year from 24s i will never get rid of this bag it's going to be one of my forever pieces i think i love it so much they did come out with a similar color this year Acacia, Acacia, I'm not sure. It's more of like a neon yellow, whereas this one's more of like a buttery, polleny yellow. I love this bag so much, so much that I would even consider getting another one. The only downside I would say is the zipper. It is quite hard to get in and out of, so that does stop me. And also, you know, there was a price increase in Canada where this bag is now well over three and a half thousand, but I love this little baby so much. Next, we will start with my Celine Mini Cabas Tote in the Triumph canvas. I got this one in fall of 2019. I've used it quite a bit. It still shows very little wear. I have been wondering whether or not I should sell this one and get something a little bit bigger, considering I have a lot of bags that fit this amount of things. Since everything is vertical, you do have to play a little bit of Tetris, but it does expand a little bit given that it is canvas, so you can fit some bigger things in there if you want. The canvas from Celine is very durable, it's very nice, and it's a little bit more understated, especially if you wear it on the side that doesn't say Celine. People are just like, oh, what is that nice dark brown bag? Next, and my last Celine bag is my Celine Ava in the color Forest. I got this for Christmas of 2021, so last year, and I love it so much. It's this really beautiful forest color. I have dedicated reviews and videos on all of the bags that I'll be showing, well, for the most part. All the ones that I'll be talking about, I'll list down below if you want a little bit more about the bags themselves. So this is my Ava. I love it so much. Um, I was considering selling this one and then getting the Ava again in the Triumph canvas just because I prefer the shoulder style of the Ava. Um, still TBD though. So I am going to try to power through these just because I know there's going to be quite a few of them and I don't want to make this video like 100 minutes long. So as I mentioned before, dedicated reviews down below. Next, we have Mew Mew and after this I'll do Prada, keep them all together. So this is my most recent addition. This is a Mew Mew tote that I picked up from a uh, consignment store. So this is my pre-loved Mew Mew tote. I'm not sure what year this was from, but I do quite like it. It's huge, it has the little Mew Mew plaque here on the inside. It has this beautiful purple satin lining and it's just so easy to wear. Just on the shoulder, it looks really nice. It fits a ton, it's very comfortable. I haven't actually worn this one out yet. I plan on wearing it out pretty soon, especially as we head into fall and big bags make their debut again. Next on the Mimu train, we have my Mimu Madalase shoulder bag. So I got this one for myself in January of this year. I wanted a flap bag that sort of looked like the Chanel boy, um, but was like a little bit different. I didn't want to get anything from like Dior or anything like that. It's just leather lined as well. 
and I had really wanted something with the classic metal essay quilting from Mimi that they're known for. And I picked this one up. It's gone through a few price increases and also went on sale. So the pricing of this one's sort of all over the place, but it is retailing now for around four and a half thousand on Farfetch, which I think is absolutely crazy. Yeah, Mimi has been really upping their prices lately, I guess, to stay competitive, but I really love this one. It's in a beautiful lamb skin. This one's a bit more formal, so I only wear this one more I was in formal occasions or if I'm wearing all black or just going to like a nice dinner. So this is that baby. Next we'll do Prada, so Mimi's sister. Um, I'll start off with this big tote bag. So this is a ginormous tote. Let's see if I can get it in frame. Um, it is all nylon and it has these Safiano leather handles and trim. I wear this as a travel bag. It comes with a nice long shoulder strap that you can wear crossbody as well. I believe they still make this one and it just sits nicely. It's super compact, very easy to use. Honestly, the perfect travel bag if I ever did have one. I also got this one on sale, which was really lucky and I only paid around 700 for it and it retailed for well over 15. So a great score here. I remember when I got that one. I think like 20, 2018 maybe. Next is this one. So this is, I'll twist it up. This is a messenger bag in nylon. I have a dedicated review of this one as well. I don't know if they make this style anymore. It would be a shame if they don't because it's really good. Um, I feel like it's more masculine, but I don't see why women couldn't wear it as well. It sits really nicely, it hugs the body. It's just very easy to use. Obviously it's Prada nylon, so it's gonna be super functional, super easy, carefree. There are a lot of other bag brands that make similar styles. Like I know Louis Vuitton makes one that's fairly similar. I think Celine also makes one that's fairly similar. So if you can't find this one, definitely check those out because the style itself is so functional. Just put my phone in here. Everything else in here has a nice back pocket as well. Um, and it still looks great and I've had it for I think I got this one fall of 2019 as well. Or maybe fall of 2018 actually. Might have been even earlier. But this is my little Prada messenger bag. Next we are going to get into Bulgari. So I just got this um, Bulgari Micro Serpenti Forever bag. I love this bag so much. I actually am surprised about how much I've been wearing it. It's just super easy to use. It hugs the body really nicely. Super easy. I just Put my cards my airpods maybe a lip like a chapstick in there and it just holds everything that i need just to go out and about i am definitely interested in getting more things from bulgari i'll link the unboxing and the review to this down below um, but i was so impressed with everything that i received when i ordered this one online i just got everything i felt so special opening everything um, and considering this is probably my least expensive designer bag obviously it's a micro bag so it comes with that territory but everything that I got you would have thought I had spent 10 times the price that I actually did okay so we're done with the designer bags now those are all of my designer bags I will be transitioning now into some more contemporary brands so we're going to be starting it off with Marc Jacobs so this is the infamous Marc Jacobs the tote bag in the mini size in color block khaki canvas I have a few videos on this one I really love it it's I get the hype totally. I know this video is, or this bag is super talked about on the internet. Everyone loves it. And I see why. It's so easy to use. It's so lightweight. You can fit so much in here. And the price point is great. I only paid around 180 200 Canadian for this. It's even cheaper in the States. So you can get so much bag for your money with this purchase. And it's still so well made and such a quality piece. So definitely check this one out if you haven't already on the contemporary train we have my coach academy backpack i picked this one up i believe in 2017 or 2018 i can't exactly remember but i got it when i was still in university as i wanted like a nice leather uni bag this one at the time was around 800 it was a part of their 1941 line which was I mean, they don't have it anymore, they dissolved it, but it was more of their higher end line. Things were nicer, the whole bottom is leather, and it is held up so nice. I've worn this in the rain, I've worn this in the snow, I've worn this in the hot weather. I wear this now currently for work, and it, it's such a good laptop, or su not such a good laptop, such a good backpack, I wanna say. I just, I'm really impressed with the coach quality. 
and I still use it today. I love it so much. I have a video on this one as well. Um, they did change the design when they dissolved the 1941 line. So the new designs are a little bit different than the one that I have. They are a little bit you know, cheaper, I would say, but the functionality is still there. I would still go for it today, even with the new ones. Next, we have a Lululemon. So this is my Lululemon multi-pouch crossbody bag. I really like this one. Um, for those that don't know, I do work for Lululemon, so I did get this one at a discount, and all opinions on this bag are my own, but I do love it so much. Um, the nylon is fairly good. I love that they use metal zippers because, you know, some houses that charge a lot more don't <clears throat> product. But I love this bag so much. They don't make it as much anymore because it was so trendy, but I really do think if you are wanting a nylon piece but you don't want to spend product dollars, definitely check out Lululemon because everything everything is there. Things are double stitched. There's piping that's done in nylon as well. There's leather pieces. You know, I, you couldn't ask for more bag for your buck than this one, especially compared to the recent price increases on the Prada re-edition where it's almost like two and a half, three thousand now and I'm like, when did this happen? And this one was around 100, so definitely check it out. Okay, and to sign it off with two bags from Canadian brands. So this is my Roots tote bag. It's just a simple leather tote. It's not really lined. It's a unlined leather tote. And my mom actually gave this one to me. I don't use it as much as I used to, but I do really like the brown leather and it's held up really, really nice. Um, I don't know what she paid for it or when she got it, but I do just keep this one for, you know, if I need to carry a little bit, but not too much. And lastly, we have my Rudsack men's crossbody bag in this really, really beautiful sandy leather color. Just looks like that on the inside. I don't know if Rudsack still makes bags like they used to. Rudsack is more of like an Eastern Canadian brand, I would say, similar to Moose Knuckles. They're really known for their winter coats and stuff, but they used to make um, leather bags. This bag is from 2014. I used to use it as a school bag and now I sometimes carry it for work. It is so easy to use, so functional, goes with everything. And then I have this little um, Prada T charm, which is super cute. It's very varsity. And lastly, I forgot to show this one earlier, my Nepapajiri bum bag. I love this one so much. I got this from Farfetch. This was around, I think it was only like $70 this cute little mermaid cat pin. It's so functional, so easy to wear. I would definitely recommend this one if you can find it. I feel like it's the perfect size. And if you like that sporty Patagonia vibe, but you want something a little bit different, Nepapachiri is the way to go. So those are all of my bags. I know we sort of breezed through it, but we had 14 to talk about and I, I do have videos down below, but I just want to sort of show my collection as it is now. I've been doing a lot of thinking, you guys, you know, 14 bags, is objectively a lot of bags and I feel like in this YouTube community space it's always talking about the next thing you want your wish list items what do you want to get next how big is your collection who has the biggest collection who has the most extensive collection with multiples of each bag and I don't know I've really fallen away from that there was definitely a time where I aspired to have Kylie Jenner's closet with wall-to-wall -wall Birkins now I don't really aspire for that much as well considering I barely get legitimate use out of the bags that I do have. I just don't really see it for myself to purchase any more bags at this time because I feel like every bag need that I could possibly have, I have something for it. Like I don't need any more bags. And I touched on this a little bit before, but I feel like the designer releases lately are just kind of boring. Like maybe it's because we've had so many, they come so fast now. It's like designer fast fashion. That's sort of a concept that's swirling around where as soon as we see something, we like it. There's this scarcity mindset because things are selling out so quickly, but prices keep going up. So you want to get it before the price goes up, but then you need you get it and like the quality has gone down, but then you can't return it because if you return it, then it'll be sold out and you can't replace it. It's just like this whole game now where the luxurious experience of going in, purchasing a bag, you know, really feeling like you're you're being valued more than if you go to like H&M or Zara or some sort of like a, a store with a lower price point. Luxury fashion, luxury shopping has just become so quick and so around who can have the most, who can collect the most, who has the newest collections. 
and it's just becoming exhausting and I've seen this from a few other creators as well Jessie Stiles she's spoken about this um, Caitlin Pulowski she's also spoken about this obviously Eileen from um, Colorful Noir she's spoken about this so it just seems like as a whole the luxury group on the internet let's say is sort of starting to shift a little bit away from this hyper collective we always need to have more and newest and best where it's just like I just want to use the things that I have at this point I don't want to constantly be getting the next thing, buying the next thing. And it's becoming a bit stressful trying to figure out, okay, well, what am I gonna buy next? I need something to buy so I can show on the internet so that other people wanna buy it and like will think I'm relevant and trendy and all that sort of stuff. And I just wanna, I just wanna use the things that I have to their fullest extent. These bags cost so much money and I feel like I'm not even getting remotely close to the amount of wear that I should be getting out of some of these bags. And I'm just, there's some bags that I'm scared to use. Like, like this one, this is basically just like, it's just like decoration it's decor in my house at this point it just like sits there it looks really cute and i don't wear it remotely as much as i should for how much i paid for it but also at the same time i don't want to downsize my collection i feel like it's at a good place where i'm genuinely really liking almost everything that i have and i definitely would rather use the things that i have keep the things that i have than go out there and try to find more to fill these needs that i don't really have that I just think I have through like marketing, being like, oh my God, yes, I need this newest thing. You know, I just, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know what you thought of my bags. Let me know which one was your favorite. Let me know where you're at with shopping as well. Yeah, I would just love to know what, what you all think if you're in the same boat, if you're like, my collection's good, you know, I don't really need anything else. Or if there's like one more thing that you wanna add and then you're like, you know what, I'm done, so. Thank you. All right, I also thought I would show a little bit how my bags are stored. So up on the top shelf, you can see I have my non-designer bags here, and then I have my totes just over here. On this shelf, I have some of my taller bags. So I have my Bulgari here, my Celine tote, Marc Jacobs tote, Napa Pajiri, and then this Prada pouch, which I got quite a while ago. If you notice, I have all of my dust bags lining the metal um, shelving here just so that no lines get on the bags but I don't store any of my bags and dust bags I used to but now I just keep them out so I can see them and then on this shelf I have more of my I guess my nicer bags the ones that I use a lot so we have the Celine Nano here the Ava the Mimiu and then the Prada bag here and then just car keys wallet and whatnot I like to keep everything out just so I can see it but yeah that's how I store my bags if you want a more vertical view, this is what I see when I walk into my closet. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.